Hey guys, if this is your first time to my channel, hello and welcome. My name is Emily and I hope you have your conspiracy caps on because today I am bringing you another spooky Saturday. So for this spooky Saturday, I am bringing you a story that is unlike any of the ones I have told on this channel thus far. Today I'm going to be talking about the cult Heaven's Gate. Yes, I know. A cult. Starting off Easter weekend right, guys. So we've talked about all sorts of alien things on this channel so far with Spooky Saturday. We've talked about my personal stories with the little gray dudes. We've talked about other people's stories with gray aliens. And today we are going to be touching on aliens yet again. That's why I decided to choose Heaven's Gate Cult because the main premise of the cult is that this guy, Marshall Applewhite, who used to be a musician and a student music teacher at a high school actually started a cult. He firmly believed that there was a spaceship riding on the tail end of a comet that happened to pass by Earth in 1997 that would take him and his followers onto the next life and into a different dimension from where they once came from to the start. So let's go ahead and get some background knowledge on the cult leaders themselves. Marshall Applewhite, the cult leader himself, was just your average Joe. He was a musician and he taught students at a high school how to play musical instruments. He had a wife and he lived in Corpus Christi, Texas. Everything was completely normal in his life until one day he was actually accused of sleeping with one of his male students at the school. Naturally, he was let go and his 16 year long marriage ended. Now at the same time, in a different part of Texas, there was a woman named Bonnie Lou Nettles. She had just ended her 23 year long relationship with a man. She was living with her child. She was just living her life day to day, very, very bored with everything that was going on. And apparently she would take her child out into the backyard with her and they would watch the stars all the time. And Bonnie would always talk about how she wanted aliens to come and abduct her and come get her and just for something new to happen. And she just had a belief that she just wasn't supposed to be here on earth and i can understand that belief because you know sometimes you look up and you're like what the hell is this like what's going on why am i here so i can totally understand where she was coming from with that but she firmly believed that she had a higher purpose if you will and that she was not fulfilled in this life now marshall and bonnie actually met at a theater that her daughter worked at in 1972 and they immediately fell in love with each other and had this attraction to each other both knew they didn't want to just work nine to five every day and just have a very basic and bland life. So they actually ran away together and went on a one year long spiritual vacation road trip. Living in the woods, they were camping out, they were just trying to experience something different and hopefully an epiphany would come to them. And they did. About a year after they had left on their spiritual trip, Bonnie's daughter got a letter from Bonnie stating that her and Marshall had basically had an epiphany. So on their spiritual trip, they basically had an epiphany that they had to let people know that we were from the stars and that eventually we would have to go back. That's basically what they came to while they were on their trip. They were probably doing a shit ton of acid and they were just like, oh, okay, well, we are children of the stars, so we gotta go back there. They had firm beliefs in aliens and that aliens had something to do with our lives, which I believe too, but, you know, not, not to the extent that they took it, and we will get to that in a little bit. Bonnie Lou's daughter actually got some letters from her while she was on the little trip. Bonnie Lou's daughter actually got a lot of letters from her while she was on her spiritual trip, and it basically stated that her and Marshall had to go out and spread the word to other people, all of their findings, everything that they figured out while they were on their trip, probably on drugs, knew that they had to just go out and tell people about this and recruit others who felt very similarly to them. Then they came back to Texas and they wanted to form a group. So they started recruiting people to join their group called Human Individual Metamorphosis. If that doesn't sound like a cult name, I don't freaking know what does. They practiced new age and Christian ideologies, and they had a firm belief that aliens were going to come down and 
basically cleanse the world and take us back to where we once came, which was up in the stars. Both Bonnie and Marshall were the leaders of the cult and they went by the names T and Doe, which I believe are both from the musical scale. Since Marshall was in the musical field back in his day, that would make sense why they were named that, but they just wanted a completely different identity that was only for the cult. They actually got a decent amount of followers and people were believing what they were saying. I'm sure you guys know, but most of these cult leaders are very charming. They're very, you know, persuasive with their words. They're good with speaking. So it's pretty easy to be persuaded into getting into these cults, especially when you start bringing in aliens and UFOs. People are into that kind of stuff. I know I am. So I could definitely see how people would be intrigued by these ideas. Plus it was the 1970s and early 1980s. And, you know, there was a lot of talk of nuclear warfare and the end of the world, the millennium was coming up in the 2000s, so people were, were scared of the world ending then. So it would make sense why people would flock to something like this where they could kind of confide and believe that they were going to have a second chance if the world ended or if something happened. So in 1984, Bonnie actually passed away from brain cancer in the hospital. She went under a fake alias so her kids didn't actually know that she passed away until months after she had died, until Marshall decided to tell them after she had already been dead for a very long time. Why he decided to hide this from her children, I have absolutely no idea, but they didn't know until after she had been gone for a long time and that impacted them greatly in their lives. Now that Bonnie had died, Applewhite was free to run the cult on his own. Things started to get a little bit out of hand once he got full reign of the cult. They actually changed their names to the Heaven's Gate cult in the early 80s and people were really starting to join the cult and be interested and people really believed what Marshall was saying. He would put out homemade videos of himself trying to basically preach his gospel to other people and get them to join his cult and recruit. People would kind of come and go in and out of the cult. I actually watched a documentary earlier about this entire cult and there is a man who was there from, I believe, 1982 to like 1994, around that time period, and he was a part of the cult. And I'm gonna touch on something that he says a little bit later, so keep that in mind. When the 90s rolled around, the internet was just starting to blossom. People were getting email and we were getting windows and all that good stuff. You guys remember the early ages of the internet because that was a fun time for me. I don't know about you guys, but I freaking miss Neopets and think about it all the time. So Marshall Applewhite had access to the internet. He was putting out videos to recruit people. He was sending out letters, emails, making multiple websites to get people to join his cult. Through the internet, the Heaven's Gate cult was actually raising about $400,000 a year, which is crazy to think that people would donate so much money to this cult. They actually ended up having enough money to actually pay to insert an ad into USA Today and multiple other magazines around America to recruit people into the cult. I don't know what USA America was doing letting them put an ad into their magazine, but I'm sure that they regret it now knowing the outcome of what happened with this cult. That was a very bad call on USA America's part. In the cult itself, Marshall wouldn't really let anyone have contact with their family, and his main premise with the cult members was that he wanted them to remove all of their human instincts, if you will. He would make his cult members remove all of their bad human instincts. So, you know, wanting to reproduce with each other, the need to have money for themselves, things along those lines. Him and six other followers actually flew to Mexico City to have themselves surgically castrated so that they wouldn't have these urges. People believe this was sort of a reflection of what Marshall felt towards himself with his, you know, homosexual fantasies, if you will, that he was having with some of these students back in the day at the school. And I think that really kind of resonated with him throughout the rest of his life. And he wanted to get rid of that. So instead of just doing it himself, he made his cult members do it with him. So that's great. So apparently in his mind, instead of just being a man and doing it himself and getting rid of his own personal, you know, messed up things going on with him, he forced other people to do it with him and brainwashed them and tricked them into it. Now these people just don't have balls. Six people walking around on their own accord 
with no balls. So trouble really started to arise in 1997 where there was a bunch of fires in California that actually turned the sky red and the moon red at nighttime. Now, if you're not already familiar, I believe it's the book of Revelations in the Bible. I'm not trying to get religious here, but I'm just telling a story. There's a passage that says that the end of the world will happen when the sky turns red and the moon turns red and blood starts to rain down and all sorts of horrifying stuff that I don't want any part of. So naturally, Marshall saw this as a sign that he had to get his shit together and start preparing everyone for basically the next phase of life. And if the fires weren't already proof enough to Marshall that he needed to move on to the next life, there was a comet that was going to fly by Earth in 1997 called the Hale-Bopp Comet, and it had a gigantic long comet tail that we could see from Earth, and it was super beautiful apparently, but it had not been seen from Earth in 2000 years. And somehow, I don't know how, but Marshall interpreted this as there being a spaceship at the end of the comet, where the tail was. Since it hadn't been here in 2000 years, and it was happening around the same time as the fires, where supposedly the sky was turning red, therefore the end of the world was coming, he thought that there was going to be a spaceship at the end of the comet, and he claimed to his followers that he could communicate telepathically with the spaceship, and they believed him. Why? Uh, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows, but they believed him and that's all that mattered. He preached to his followers that they were going to need to get on that comet somehow. So they set up a plan to basically commit suicide together to basically leave their bodies somehow and be transported on to the ship that was going to be passing by at the end of a comet logic. I don't I don't know where the logic was in this situation, but they believed it and so they acted upon those beliefs. Shortly before the comet was supposed to pass over the world and pass over California where the cult was currently at, they rented a mansion in Rancho Santa Fe, California. The weeks prior to the mass suicide, Marshall and his followers were planning and basically prepping for the next transition into the next life. They all made sure to get buzz cuts and made sure to go out and get purple robes, Nike running shoes, and to make sure that they had $5 exact change in quarters. On March 26th in 1997, 39 bodies were found throughout the mansion. They were all laying in the same fashion. They were laying on their backs. They had bags over their heads. They had Nike running shoes, the same outfit on, and exactly $5 in quarters in their pocket. They had also all ingested and consumed poisoned applesauce, which ended up killing them. And then if for some reason that didn't end up killing them, they decided to go with the old bag over the head trick and finish it that way. Marshall himself was amongst these 39 people and he truly believed that this was going to happen and they all did. They firmly believed that they were going to be able to rise up out of their dead bodies and go into a different field, a different plane of the universe and be able to enter this spaceship. And this was the only way to enter the spaceship couldn't do it any other way. You couldn't just holler for the spaceship to come down. I mean, dude, you were telepathically communicating with them. I don't understand why suicide was the way that he wanted to do it, but he did, and unfortunately, 39 people lost their lives. What's weird to me is that there was nothing written out or any instructions on why they were wearing the shoes, the Nike shoes, why they decided to go with a purple blanket and the outfits, and what's most confusing for me is what the hell were you guys gonna do with five dollars in quarters up in a different dimension. I mean, is currency different up there? Like, is five dollars in quarters in a different dimension like a million dollars in our world? I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe they wanted to have five dollars in quarters so that once they got to their new planet and their different plane field and whatnot that they could head on over to McDonald's and get themselves a Big Mac. So that is basically where the story ends. Everyone committed suicide and we will never know if they were able to get to their destination or not. Now, I'm not the kind of person to rule out anything when it comes to space. We have no freaking clue. And maybe there was an alien telling Mr. Marshall Applewhite down here on Earth that he needed to come up and that he would be saved and that his followers would be saved and taken somewhere, you know, safe in a different dimension and on a different planet. But I don't know. I can't say that he was completely wrong because I have no idea and no one knows, but it's just really sad and I definitely hope that they were able to get to where they were going. Something tells me that they weren't 
and that Marshall was just kind of compensating for being a bad person, but we'll never know. I just hope that they were able to get at least some sort of what they wanted in the afterlife. I'll tell you who I am as to whether or not you believe who I am or not is up to you. I'm from kingdom level above human. What does that yield? That yields immediately that the vast majority say, cult, some religious radical, some blasphemous individual that wants to take advantage of people, you know, has some big bank account somewhere that they're taking whatever possessions that followers can get. I wish you'd show me where that bank account so that we could use it to get this information out. It means that you leave that world behind. You even become another individual. It means that even the mind that you had as a human is aborted and the soul that was given to you is filled with next level information, next level mind, and a new creature is born. This is your chance. I'm here. I can take you out of here. I can lead you into that kingdom level above human. That can't happen unless you leave the human world that you're in and come and follow me. Time is short. Last chance. I wanted to briefly touch on the interview that I watched where a man that was actually in the cult from the early 80s to the mid 90s was talking about them and their suicide and how he felt about it. And this man, this dude straight up said that he was jealous and that he had missed out on a golden opportunity. Dude, come on. This man firmly believes to this day that he missed out on a golden opportunity and that he forever regrets it because he is not on the planet with Marshall and his followers with their buzzed hair and their Nike running shoes. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I don't think Marshall's on that planet, but if he is, maybe he did miss out. Who knows? You'll never know, and we will never know. That's gonna be it for today's Spooky Saturday video. This one was kind of like a mixture of all sorts of topics. We have some true crime, we have some UFO stuff, and then some spooky stuff as well. So, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I think that cults are super, super weird, but super interesting, and I'm super intrigued by them. I am always watching documentaries about this kind of stuff, and I'm just totally fascinated by the world of, you know, the unknown, paranormal, cults, whatever you have it. I love all of it. I do hope that you consider subscribing. I have all sorts of spooky stuff happening here every single Saturday, and on the rest of the week, I do all sorts of makeup stuff. So if those two things are your thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and I hope that you are having an absolutely awesome day wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!